lost at sea, stranded in a vast region of the Atlantic called the Bermuda Triangle. This area is infamous because so many ships and planes have mysteriously disappeared. So we'll have to play it smart or we could become the next statistic. Well, here I've got a towel, sarong, and a tiny little bit of sunscreen. Got our day bag. Almost full bottle of water, a knife, looks like some fishing stuff, a couple of hooks in it. Okay, rope, tarp. Ooh, it looks like some dirty rainwater in the bow, so that's not safe to drink. I think the first order of business is start hydrating. Realistically, how long is this going to last two people? Technically, that's only about an hour's worth of water in this kind of weather. But realistically, that could see us through Eight hours is, uh, we're gonna supplement this right away. So we're gonna make a little bit of sea aid. It can be mighty tempting to drink seawater if you're stranded for days on the ocean, but it can kill you within hours. The reason this happens is because the sodium concentration is much higher than your kidneys can handle. All right, just go ahead and give me about that much. The reason why mixing up the 20% seawater is safe is because it's an amount your body can process, and the extra electrolytes are actually good for you. It tastes like one of those hideous drinks you have when you've got diarrhea rehydration thing. Yes. Uh, like this sun is brutal. Is it getting to you? I don't feel too good. Lie down here. Mike's body's cooling mechanism is shutting down. And if not treated right away, he could suffer brain damage, organ failure, or even die. So where do you this? No. You must have a sip no. of this. Why are you saying no? It's all the fresh water we got. Please drink a sip of the listen, water. Listen, listen to me, okay? I got a plan. And that dirty water that we got left up front, in the bow, in the hole, I want you to give that to me. What? What are you talking about? You're already sick. Listen that means you're to me, ridiculous. Listen to me. Just, you're going to give me an enema. Up your backside. Yes, we can put that dirty water. It's up in the bow where the tarp was. It's probably mostly dirty rainwater. My bow can absorb like 15% or something of that water, and I won't get sick. Okay? You can drink this and then give me that dirty water, okay? Just please. I'll do it. Now you need to grab the fuel line from the gas jugs. I've never given them an enema before. Well, they had them from medical training. We're gonna clean it, baby. We're gonna. We're gonna flush it with the seawater. I'm gonna give it a really good rinse. I can use the ocean water to clean out the petrol line, but I can't use the salt water to hydrate Mike, just for the same reason we couldn't drink it. So the principle, as far as I understand it, is that this water would make you sick if you swallowed it, because it went into your gut. But if it goes up your backside, you don't absorb the germs, because basically that's where poo is stored, which is full of germs, so you, your body doesn't absorb them. You're gonna need some kind of lubrication. Yeah. Some tan lotion. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna configure to receive enema. Okay, now it might sound like a stupid thing to say, baby, but you gotta relax. It should be this, sir. How far do I push it? Oh, only two or three inches, baby, my goodness. Go up there. God's sake, don't fart. Okay. Do you want another one? Yeah, there's some more in. When I said I do, I didn't sign up for this. My poor baby. Illness is such a humbling thing. But if you get bashful, you can end up dead. Ready? Yeah. OK. No. I'm full. I'm full. OK. Put your legs down as quickly, I suggest. What happens now when you absorb it all? You have to push some of it out. Sit for a while, let it absorb. Get rid of the rest. So now we wait. Being an army guy, surviving at sea isn't exactly my area of expertise. In fact, I'm a bit prone to seasickness. We also have to start thinking about food. And out here, the only thing on the menu is seafood. But first, we need bait. That means one of us is going to have to get wet. I'm going to uh, take a chance and uh, dive in and try to find something we can use for bait. What about the sharks? Well, maybe you can just keep a watch out for the sharks. No, no, I'm a better swimmer. 
and I don't want the responsibility of not spotting a shark. should be diving for the sharks, okay? It's risky. All right, I'll dive for the sharks. Let nope. I'm a better swimmer. Give. You dive. I'll be on shark watch. Keep watching. I am watching, honey. I'm doing my job. You don't worry about me. She can't be bossy. The cat is so strong. You looking out for sharks? Yes. You look better than the sharks. It's not funny. When you get on my nerves, you really get on my nerves. Get us some bait, please. Ruth has good reason for concern. Right, there are done. over 40 different species of shark that cruise these waters, including reef sharks, tiger sharks, and some say the most aggressive of all, the bull shark. Slice that in little strips for us. And that'll be our bait. We only have two hooks for fishing, and we have to be very cautious not to lose them. So Ruth is watching out for sharks while I try to catch a fish. Come on, fishy fishies. Oh. I think we got one, baby. You got a fish! Yes, there you go. All right. Is this edible? It's quite brightly colored. Yes, he is edible. All right. Excellent. As yucky as it is, we're gonna suck some fish eyeballs. What? Yeah, because that's water in there, baby. Oh. Uh, you no. burst the eye. Suck it, suck it. Oh, the black juice. Suck it. It's all black anyway. There you go. OK. Fluid found in fish eyes may not be much, but it is a fresh water source. And since we're out of water, we have to maximize every option we can to stay hydrated. OK, babe, it's starting to get cold, so tonight we're going to do our sleeping a little bit different. What I was thinking is we'll, we'll cut like a strip of this, and we'll put it over top of us, you know? I get the principle, but I'm scared that you're just going to chop so much of this we won't have anything to make a shelter. You can either tell me how you want to do it, or you can just go with it and let me tell you how I want to do it, because I know clearly what I'm trying to do. Let's do it. That's big enough. That's big enough. Think so? Yeah, that's big enough for my okay. head. Oh. <laughs> Your head's a little bigger than you thought, huh? Just because my brain is big. <laughs> Pull my hair out. Hold. I love the new coat now. I'm so much warmer. The coat inventor is really annoying, but I love the new coat. <laughs> this is brilliant. Thank you, honey. Ready for action. Sexy? Give me a kiss. You look like a cup up. A couple of oompas. Here we go. All right. Oh, yes. Oh. Yeah, that's good. That's going to be a good night's sleep right there. I won't go that far. I'm going to check the soda still. I'm so thirsty. Is there enough to take a sip? A little sip. Hey, I hear a plane. Look at that, babe. There's a plane out there. What's just wrong? How can he not see us? He must smell the sea. There you go. He's waving his wings. He's waving his wings. <laughs> Oceans occupy over 70% of the planet, and it's one of the most challenging environments for humans to survive in. It's a harsh reminder of just how small we are in the world. Being prepared is the key, but without Ruth's help out here, these waters may have gotten the best of me. That was just perfect. 